Hello everyone, I am Nicholas and I am the intern that has invaded and taken over this Nidwana session. I have been given an assignment in which I can freely choose the topic. For this video, I have chosen a scenario in which I have been tasked to find a new secondary school that is to be constructed in Cape Town. The following requirements must be met for this site. It has to be within 200 meters from a cycle route. It has to be within 100 kilometers from the Cape Town CBD. It cannot be within 100 kilometers from an existing secondary school. And it cannot be within a greenbelt zone, in which the greenbelt zone is a land use type in which no urban development can occur. As you can see in pages, I've done some pre-preparations before I started. Over here, I've created a geo package and I've added those, those layers that I just listed. And there are also some additional layers. I will explain why in just a minute. If you look here below, I've assigned the project CRS as WGS84 UTM Zone 34S, as this is the best ref the coordinate reference system for Cape Town. As for the reason why I reprojected these layers, we need to look at the properties of the layer. If you look at the coordinate reference system of this layer, it is in EPSG 4326 WSG84 Geographic with its unit in degrees. This is not the best CRS for Cape Town, but in addition, the unit is also in degrees. And if you recall, we're gonna be working with meters in, and kilometers in our analysis. So in order to do that, we needed to reproject our layer into EPSG 32734 WGS 34 UTM zone 34S projected as we'll then make our units into meters and this will allow us to do buffer analysis okay so for now we have to start off by finding the secondary schools and only the secondary schools that are in Cape Town alone so for the first step we're going to have to find the schools that only lie within Cape Town. To do this, we're going to have to do a selection by location. We're going to have to go to Research Tools and select by location. Over here, we're going to now say select features from the reprojected Western Cape Secondary Schools layer and we're going to compare it to the Cape Town layer. And we're going to create a new selection. Right now, we will have a selection of only the, the schools that are inside Cape Town. And now, we're going to create a new layer from this. And we must make sure that, you, that it's only the selected features. Okay, from this, I'm gonna now save this selection directly into the our geo package over here. So I just have to select the correct geo package and then I have to now give the, na the layer name over here in which it is this Cape Town School and will be in the same reference zone as the initial layer. Okay and now we have the new layer. It will of course put the name of the geo package in the front but this can easily be changed by just renaming it. Alright. For the next step we have to create a buffer around the Cape Town schools, the CBD, and the cycle routes. Okay, first we're gonna start with the Cape Town schools. To do that, we have to go to Vector, Geoprocessing Tools, Buffer, and then we select the Cape Town schools layer, in which it is already selected in this case. The distance is 1000 meters, and we're gonna dissolve the result 
if any other buffers overlap each other for any of the schools. And we're gonna save it to the existing geo package in which it is the Nicholas Cape Town Secondary School geo package. And the layer name will be Cape Town School Buffer. As you can see, we have a buffer in which it has dissolved any ones that overlap. Alright, now we are going to do the same for the cycle routes and for the CBD. The CBD also has a 1000 meter buffer, so I shall do the same. And now I shall do the same for the cycle. In this case, the distance is 200 meters. Okay, so now I've gotten all of my buffers. Alright, now we're gonna have to find the land use type that is now unoccupied. So it is possible to build a new school upon it. To do that, we have to go into the attribute table and do a selection by expression. Okay, so we're gonna have to go to the, the land use type. Connection table. And we're going to have to do select features in the expression. Okay, so to do this, we're going to have to make it that the INT zone T is equal to now it's not the double quotation, it's a single quotation. Or if you say the apostrophe unoccupied. Because if it's double double quotation, that actually means that it is going to apply to the the name of the column instead. So we must, we must use this notation, not double double quotation mark. Select these features and it will be added to the selection. Okay, so from that we now go and we export the selected features. Save the geo package and you give it a name. Same series, okay. I'm going to rename this layer.
Okay, so now I'm gonna have to find the areas in which the construction site can lie upon and the areas in which this construction site cannot lie upon. To do this, I'm gonna have to do some intersections and unions of certain layers. So in order to do the areas in which the site can lie upon, I'm gonna have to do an intersection of the CBD 1000 meter layer, the unoccupied land use layer, and the 200 meter cycle route buffer layer. To do this, I'm gonna to have to do intersect two layers at a time, take that output and intersect it with the third one. I'm gonna to go to Geoprocessing Tools intersection. I'm gonna take the CBD buffer layer and I'm gonna intersect it with the 200 meter cycle loops. I'm gonna create a new file. Save it to the geo package as CBD cycle loops. Now I'm gonna have to intersect this output with the unoccupied land use. And this is gonna take a real while. So I'm gonna take that output and intersect it with the unoccupied land use layer. And I'll save it to a new geo package, which is in this case not really a new one, it is just the existing one. And the output would be areas lies within. Please enjoy this intermission while the process finishes. Welcome to the intermission. I hope you're enjoying my Bob Ross author. This is an assignment that I had to do earlier in the month. And I mean, man oh man. <clears throat> Just look at those words. Look at the absolute definition of it. On a side note, I'm pretty sure you also realized that while I was recording the video, also wasn't saving along the way. Well, I didn't show myself saving. I was saving in between the takes. Yes, this was not done in one take. This was with multiple cuts in between. I'm sure some have realized it. Okay, there is also some other thing I wish to discuss in this intermission, and it involves the geo packages. All right, so here I'm gonna create a new geo package, and I'm also gonna save a project into that geo package. So here I'm going to create a new one and I'll just call it test for example. And I'll sign it the geometry type of point. This one uh, shape file that's in the geo, geo package. And I'll just assign it any, any series. And just give it something in the table. Okay, now that there is a layer inside this geo package, I'm also gonna save this project into this geo package for test as well. Now, if you look inside test, there is now a project called test inside of the geo package. And now let's go and add a base map. And this will be the example layer that we'll be talking about. Alright, so I've added the, this world map over here. And now, if I import it into the test your package, you have to be certain 
that the import is successful. But in, in addition to that, you need to move this layer here, this world map, out. Because now this world map is not the layer that's actually been assigned to the, uh, the uh, project that's inside the geopack. It's this one that I just moved out now. So that means if I've made any changes to the, the previous world map, nothing would be done. You wouldn't have saved it. You don't make sure that it's the one from here inside the geopackage that you move over and you do any edits, any sort of ed editing to this one here that you have just taken out from the geo package inside this test. Okay, thank you. And let's continue with the rest of the video. I've now completed the output and it has been created. Let me just uncheck this to see if it has. There we are. Yeah. Here is which can All right, now I'm gonna create the restriction areas. Now I'm gonna find the areas in which the construction site cannot lie within by taking the green belt zone and unioning it with the Cape Town School's 1000 meter buffer. I will go to Vector, Geo Processing Tools, and go to Union. I'll then select Greenbelt Zone, and then I will select the Cape Town School 1000 meter buffer. And I shall save it to the Geo package. Give it a name. Restriction. And it create the object. Okay, now I've created this restrictions layer. And now I should find area in which uh, the area the search lies within inside the restrictions layer and then I shall do a an inverse selection and then those will be the sites in which the Krypton schools can be built upon. Okay now that I found the restrictions layer I can now find a suitable sites for the secondary school by taking selection by location of the area the site lies within and intersecting it with the restrictions layer and then from that selection I invert the selection so to do this I will go to vector research tools and do a select by location and I'm going to take the area the site lies within and I'm going to find the intersect of the restrictions and I'm going to create a new selection from this Okay. And the new selection is this over here. But now this is the intersect of the area the site lies within and the restrictions. So these are the areas with which the school cannot be built upon. Now to find the areas in which the school can be built upon, I just invert the current selection. And now these are the suitable areas over here. Now I'm going to go and export it, export the selected feature and I'm going to put it directly into GeoPack. And I'll call it suitable site. Okay. Now we have our suitable sites. Okay, now I'm gonna rename this layer just to suitable site for simplicity. And 
now we have to create the map. So I'm gonna just untick everything that is unnecessary for us. The thing is now, this is only just a shapefile of Cape Town. I don't know exactly where this is. So in order to know where this is exactly, we could have to put a base map on. I'm gonna go to the web services. I'm just gonna insert a simple Google map. And just note that this Google map cannot be added into the geo package okay so now I'm going to go into the the layout manager and we'll create a new, a new layout. Okay, now I'm going to create the map. I'm going to insert current map okay, and find the grid size so what is the perfect resolution for this There we are. And I'll add a legend as well so we know what the sites represent. Okay, I'm gonna have to take out all the ones that are not on the map itself. The suitable construction site. save our layer and now I'm going to add a north arrow as well What will be this is more legible? And there we are. 
Muito assim. A bit more gray. It doesn't draw so much attention to the contrast between this this white area and the arrow itself. A heading is required because we don't know what this actually represents now. So I'll put one over here at the top. See? Construction sites. Sites. Give it a frame. Okay. We could give it a background as well. Let's make it a bit lighter than that. Reference map could be added as well.
Okay, so I'm gonna lock this currently. I'm gonna lock these styles as well. Okay, now I'm gonna add a new map and I'm gonna create an insect map for this area. Okay, so it's currently over this area and I'm gonna create an overview for it. Add a map frame. Map 1. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna change the scale so it is a bit more full out. That's a bit too small. I want to really see where it is. I'm going to adjust this to see if I can get a bit more bigger. Add a frame around this to distinguish it from this. Okay, a few adjustments because the title is still a bit too small. I'm just going to include, include my name as the author. along with the reference system as well. Or the coordinate reference system, should I say. APSG 327 
Okay, here we go. Yeah, I'm now gonna export this map with, with PNG. Reach for my hand, I'll soar away into the dawn. No, I wish I could stay here and cherish hope in peaceful days. I feel the edge of dawn, knowing time betrays. Now let's go see how it looks. Here's the export of my map, and it is quite a simple one, though it does get the job done. This concludes the Cape Town Secondary Schools project and my takeover over session for this new one of video. If you have any questions or future Nirvana topic ideas, please send them to info at cartoza.com where you can contact the boss man of the Nirvana series himself, Tim. Thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this video. And remember, open source software for the win.